Hello and welcome back to another video. Um, trying to be more consistent with content uploads. Um, obviously, just been incredibly busy at the moment. Uh, just on the way to prepare for a meet uh, in the next couple weeks. Um, so pretty busy in terms of that. Obviously kind of physically stressed, mentally stressed with that. Uh, just started doing free coaching as well. So, you know, a couple more people uh, taking up on that, which is quite busy. And then also doing like some of my own business projects and then uh, working full time at the moment as well. And then trying to figure out my next steps in terms of grad school, getting an apartment, that type of thing. So a lot of different things going on, uh, a lot of different stresses. But handling my training pretty well. Nice little deload week this week. Uh, taking it relatively easy. Hit a pretty smooth 600 pull for uh, 485 squat and a nice uh, 320 bench, which is pretty good for a you know deload week and off week. Um, I felt pretty terrible for the most part, so it's good. Uh, but really, getting my form where it needs to be. Need to figure out some stuff with my squat still. Um, but bench and deadlift are really where I would like them to be at this point, especially my deadlift because that doesn't tend to come in until a lot closer to the meet, but I mean, to be able to hit a 622 pole last week at about an eight uh, is really, really good, especially considering the equipment that I use is not good. Um, so it's nice, but I really wanted to just touch on a quick topic about uh, really nationals this week. So obviously probably watched all the nationals competition, absolutely crazy. I mean, amazing event to see the type of lifting that's going on, you know, 750 pulls in 83 and in the 83 kilo class and you know you see Russell he out here just destroying it amazing considering the guys really only come to the sport in the last two but the last two years but really shows you know how much um, the sport will grow when more athletes have an impetus to go to it versus uh, football things like that this guy has like incredibly good genetics um, and really could have used that for any sport track uh, football any kind of thing like that uh, but chose has chosen now to go into doing powerlifting and some bodybuilding and you know the capabilities of this guy is amazing obviously a really really hard worker but there is a genetic component to that not trying to take anything away but people when they train very specifically for a long period of time you know obviously able to get more gains um, so this guy has been you know squatting for a long time for football benching for a long time for football and he's built up that strength and now it's like really able to use that and make it good for powerlifting. So it really shows that doing any type of training for a long period of time has a good amount of carryover uh, if you do eventually decide to switch to powerlifting. And then when you apply that proper training and good coaching and things like that, you can really start to make incredible progress and get to the top of the sport, which is pretty amazing to see. Uh, but wanted to talk about mainly uh, a lot of people I've been seeing have been uh, bombing out, missing a lot of lifts, uh, going like three or four for nine. Um, and you know, like this happens every year in nationals. And it's, you know, there's a lot of factors that play here, probably three main ones. First being that it's usually the first big competition for most people. Um, you know, it's that, div it's that divided between uh, local meets and international competitions. Um, and with the insert of regionals just now, there's not really many people that are, you know, going from the local level to the regional then the national and to be honest regionals is basically a local meet so the uh, step up is still pretty significant but the judging is obviously going to be at the highest level uh, especially given the USAPL's foray into drug abuses in the recent months um, so now they really have to prove something to the IPF and so the judging just amazingly strict which I think is a good thing to be honest because you know what you're getting into if you've read the rule book which you should have you know what the rules are, so you really have no excuse. Uh, but my opinion on it, um, yeah, like I said, comes down to three things. Sorry, I just got confused myself there. Uh, the second one is going to be obviously the anxiety of being a bigger competition, a lot of high level people competing. Uh, and then the third thing is going to be the, uh, yeah, the timing of it, right? So it's different to a local meet where a local meet you might get through very quickly or it might take a while. Uh, with the nationals it tends to be a very consistent pace and because there's quite a few people competing um, it also you know can can take a little while and then also given that the warm-up area is quite small um, it's a difficult you know different environment to deal with uh, lots of different factors that play there that you might not practice 
Um, and so then that comes into another thing, which is to practice how you play. Um, I think, shockingly, a significant amount of lifters just don't do this. Um, you know, if you're not training with one to two count pauses, then you're not really training for a meet, right? Because you're probably going to miss uh, a bench attempt or two because you're, you're not pausing long enough and you're really estimating your strength on a marker that is irrelevant considering the competition. Uh, with squats, you need to be hitting depth, like below hip crease below parallel, not necessarily in the rep work, like yeah, it's important to get close to that, but at the same time, uh, you know, with your singles and with your, uh, you know, your opening attempts that you're practicing in the gym, you need to be making sure that they're getting, uh, they're hitting approved level of depth um, and then you're locking out all your deadlifts, your grip is good, things like that. Um, yeah, but you know, just making sure you're taking care of those things. Uh, that's really, really important uh, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, you need to be doing that. Otherwise you should just expect to bomb out a competition. Um, if you're not training for the competition, then you should expect to fail. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's really all I have to say about that. I mean, obviously feel bad for all the people that this happens to. Uh, it can't be a good feeling to go all the way to Orlando or uh, prepare for this competition for a long period of time and then, you know, fall at the first hurdle or, you know, miss a bunch of deadlifts or anything like that. It's just not, a, you know, it can't be a good experience. Um, you know, I really couldn't imagine how that felt. I've never bombed out at me and I hope to never do that. Um, but, you know, you need to be making sure you're going eight for nine, at least like six for nine. Because you, you're not going to get anywhere near your best total if you're not getting up towards uh, six or seven out of nine attempts. Um, so yeah, really got to prioritize those things. Just focus on upholding the standard because that's what it's really about at the end of the day. You're a representation of the USAPL, so try and be the positive one. The last thing you want is to be one of those memes on Instagram where it's a USPA lifter that doesn't hit depth. Um, so yeah, that's about that. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Hope the training, uh, deload training footage isn't too boring. Um, and I will speak to you all in the next one. Thanks.